we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we're looking at Detective Comics number 969. This is part one of the story Fall of the Batman. Written by James Tinian IV, Joe Bennett Pencils, Sal Regala Inks, Jason Wright Colors, Sal Cipriano Letters, Gylam March and Tommy Mori did the cover, Raphael Albuquerque did the variant cover, Andrew Marino Assistant Editor, Chris Conroy Senior Editor, and overall I do like the cover, it's an interesting concept. And you see, kind of get a hint as to what's going on. See, Batman has to confront the mayor about some stuff. And for the first time in a long time, Stephanie gets to see that Red Robin is in fact alive. So we have a smoochy reunion there, which is really touching and special. And then we cut to our main story eventually, where Killer Moth is trying to assemble a team. And make it sort of like what the Bat family is doing. A coordinated group of criminals that will be used as a sort of strike force. And he's got some interesting people here. He's got Solomon Grundy, Firefly, all really good criminals. You also see a couple of Riddler's goons and a few other people, somebody from the Royal Flush Gang. And it looks like he's assembling quite an assortment of people. So all in all, there's some interesting characters at play here. But it turns out one of them is not who they appear to be. And the Bat family takes their attack on the group. And we learn that the victim syndicate has, is planning a lot and they may be behind some of the shenanigans going on overall it was a decent issue but it felt like it wasn't a part one it felt almost like a standalone until the very end now clayface looks really awesome the artist really knows how to draw clayface and batwoman as far as everybody else pretty solid tim drake looks a little too much like damien to me sometimes i get those a little confused maybe but overall solid art killer moth looked really cool too unfortunately killer moth is kind of played like a chump in this one i don't like that he's supposed to be a lot scarier than he looks and he's kind of made out to be a joke and the villains are generally kind of glossed over in this story it's really more for the serialized soap opera of it as opposed to being a serious threat it was a little disappointing in that regard because it had a lot of potential for them to form like a super villain team that could have been really interesting especially if they had been trying to pull a job or something but it kind of falls apart anyway so i think it's a, a story plot thread that could have gone further and been a lot more interesting if they had dared to go there. Tinian's run has been kind of a rush job, it feels like. He's trying to do too much too quickly. Overall, it ends up being kind of mediocre. Although I do like the Clayface subplot. I think that's actually really interesting. There is that. Overall, is it worth the $3 cover price? No. Is it worth picking up? Yeah, it was an interesting story. It's part one of a new story arc. And so far, so good. I don't think it's worth the cover price. It's dollar bin material. It's good filler if you get to pick up some books and you find it in the cheap bin yeah definitely pick it up then but if it's over a buck don't bother it's not worth that just wait till you find a used copy of the trade or get it out of the discount bin when it eventually makes it there i hate to say that but it's just a very average book and the serialized nature of it really does hurt it for just grabbing up issues you're gonna really have to keep up with detective comics in order to get the most out of this so you're gonna have to go back many issues to really be fully aware of what's going on if you find it cheap grab it otherwise this might be a pass but that's just my take as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future reviews and we hope to see you on the next one we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting dangerous adventures adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we are looking at Detective Comics 970. This is part two of Fall of the Batman, written by James Tinian IV, Joe Bennett Pencils, Salvador Regala, and Ricardo Jamie, and Marcio Lorezer on inks. Jason Wright Colors, Sal Cipriano Letters. Ghulam March and Tommy Mori did the cover. Dave Weisel, Assistant Editor, Chris Conroy Editor, Brian Cunningham Group Editor. They wrote that in really weird font, made it really hard to read. Sorry about that. So the soap opera that is Detective Comics continues as Tim struggles with what he learned from future Batman. And he's trying to 
come up with some kind of perfection to everything. It's a very soap opera, teen drama sort of thing. Meanwhile, Batman and Batwoman are after this semi, and it's full of cyber assassins. And they've noticed that a lot of information is getting around explaining their moves, tactics, that sort of thing. And we find out where that's come from. Even Kate Kane's father has this information because he was running some sort of covert ops secret group at one point. Meanwhile, Clayface and Orphan are dealing with this cyber ninja factory in their own way and having a nice touching conversation because, hey, who needs a secret identity, right? Well, we find out who's behind the video and Tim is kind of losing control. He really needs to take a break, but he's unwilling to do so because he's apparently a strong-willed teenager or something. Meanwhile, Clayface talks to Miss Griffin, who he tries to apologize to and tell her that Victoria October might have a potential cure, but he is betrayed at the last second, and we're seeing the rise of the victim syndicate really go into full swing. This was a solid issue, but again, it's very serialized soap opera. You're gonna have to read a lot of backstory in order to find out what's really going on with this, and if you just grab this one off the shelf, it's gonna make almost no sense to you. Even if you pick up this issue, you're gonna have to have read the previous story arc in order for this to make any sense about the whole future Batman thing and why Tim's freaking out and the Clayface story has been going on for quite some time and that's a very strong subplot running through here as well as the victim syndicate so you really have to have read probably the last year's worth to get the most out of it I've only read a handful of issues up to this point and there's stuff on here I had to look up on the internet to find out and I just don't care that much but the victim syndicate looks like an interesting subplot and overall the art's pretty solid i'm not a huge fan of it but it's it's okay clayface looks really awesome he draws clayface really brilliantly i really like clayface as a character with this they're really characterizing him well so overall this is a solid book but you have to know way too much backstory so jumping in at this point is probably not going to be real effective you can enjoy what there is of the story but you really have to have had read all those previous issues so i would not recommend paying more than a dollar for this because while the story is well done it's so serialized that there is just way too much going on in the universe around it that you need to know in order to get the full value of the book so if you haven't been reading anything you'll have to get 969 at least to grasp anything that's really going on here otherwise you're gonna be totally lost on its own i wouldn't pay more than a buck for it you might get your dollars worth of entertainment beyond that i doubt it but that's just my take on it as always, thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future reviews. And we hope to see you on the next one. We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we are looking at Detective Comics 971. This is Fall of the Batman Part 3, written by James Tinian IV, art by Miguel Medonica, Diane Ego did inks, Jason Wright on colors, Sal Cipriano letterer, Gilliam March, and Tommy Mori did the cover, which is actually a pretty dynamic cover. It's upside down though. They should have had it flipped because you can see that he's supposed to be hanging from the Arkham sign. Instead they put it so that it looks like he's standing on it which it would look better the other way so nice work guys dave walgos was the assistant editor chris conroy editor and brian cunningham group editor like i said the cover's really cool that scene does not appear though okay so the victim syndicate have taken over arkham asylum we kind of see what's going on through the eyes of this reporter that's going in to find out what their demands are the first victim is running the show and anarchy is being a little putz like usual and Mr. Noxious is in there and he's clearly not liking what's going on because First Victim has her own plan. And that plan involves Clayface. Well, Batman and the others are in a bit of an argument as to what to do and there's a lot of blathering. Then Batman goes in to face off with some of the guards at Arkham. There's also some riots going on or protests, I should say, that are going to end up in riots, no doubt. And First Victim has her people posing as guards. 
she's kind of recruited some of them so arkham's on lockdown there should be a really cool fight between batman and all these guys but they just kind of like do it off panel and it's really really dumb we also see that they're trying to stir up clayface and that's all because of mudface who was once somebody that worked with basil it's uh glory griffin and she's very upset that he made her what she is that's a whole subplot thing that's been going on all in all it's an okay issue is it worth the three dollar cover price no uh, it took me a little while to figure out that what they're doing is actually trying to make this more like a cw show with the soap opera angle and that's really reflective in how these last several issues have gone so do i think it's worth reading if you find it for like a dollar it's an okay story but as a standalone issue it's actually one of the better parts of the story so far but definitely not the best i don't think it's worth more than a dollar maybe a buck and a half uh, i'd feel kind of cheated for two dollars even yeah it's okay but the whole thing is very much like a cw show so if you like those you probably will like this run that tinian's doing otherwise it'll come off as a little bit trite i don't know to some extent it's a little childish in a way because there's a lot of overemphasis and over dramatics on some of what's happening that feels a little unrealistic and not how normal humans react but how tv people react so from that perspective if you like the arrow and flash and legends of tomorrow shows you'll probably like this run otherwise if you don't like those shows you're probably not gonna like it as for me i don't particularly care for those shows a whole lot so i don't put a whole big value on this as far as i'm concerned it's worth about a dollar but that's just my take as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future reviews and we hope to see you on the next one We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we are looking at Detective Comics number 972. This is part 4 of Fall of the Batman. This is written by James Tinian IV, Miguel Mendoza on pencils, Diana Iga on inks, Jason Wright colors, Sal Cipriano letterer. Cover by Gillum March. I do like that cover, that's a really cool cover. Uh, there was a variant cover by Raphael Albuquerque. I don't have that one. Dave Walgos was assistant editor, Chris Conroy editor brian cunningham group editor okay for one thing if you're gonna put the credits in weird blocky letters make sure i can read them dc clayface is facing off with batman in arkham asylum batman realizes that it's a cunning ruse clayface looks really cool in this issue first of all the art is pretty solid i did like it more than i probably would have normally but it's it's solid i was pretty impressed with that there's some really cool panels in here and batman talks to the mayor who's a complete idiot and i don't know why those two are even talking to each other batman really shouldn't even give this guy the time of day meanwhile the first victim is explaining to anarchy that eh, they're gonna do some crazy stuff and dr victoria october is explaining that the serum that she's trying to concoct to fix clayface isn't ready and won't be ready for a few hours so they gotta find him and kind of delay him meanwhile batwoman gets a special surprise from her dad and the colony and it's uh it's pretty dangerous dangerous batwing and Ezreal are getting their butts handed to him and batwoman and tim get into it a little bit unfortunately there is something called the mud room where they've been storing samples of clay that have come off Clayface, and it's going to backfire horribly on them uh, some of the elements were a little bit uh silly like the whole mud room thing that was dumb and the twist ending was kind of stupid but overall it was an okay issue i like the art quite a bit but some of the elements of this were definitely definitely very tv movie kind of feel it, it very much felt like a cw episode some of it was just really bad plot twists and kind of lazy MacGuffins within the story so i didn't really care for that but all in all if i'd paid a dollar for it i wouldn't have felt cheated but i paid 250 for it and it was not worth 250 and if you find it in the bargain bin pick it up beyond that it's really not worth more than a dollar other than that i thought the art was solid but it couldn't save the bad story writing and it was an okay install in the story but it just isn't my thing so i'm not going to recommend this one unless you find it really cheap but that's just my opinion as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future reviews and we hope to see you on the next one
we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we are looking at Detective Comics number 973. This is the finale of Fall of the Batman, written by James Tinian IV. Jesus Marino, pencils, Jason Wright, colors, Sal Cipriano, letters, Gilliam, March, and Tommy Mori did the cover. Dave Walgo's assistant editor, Chris Conroy, editor, Brian Cunningham, group editor. Now the cover is pretty cool, but uh, the more you look at it, the more flaws you find with it. Like Batman's face looks really weird at first glance it's okay the general concept's good and it's the proportions more than anything that bothered me otherwise it's an okay cover we get a flashback as to the belfry being built and what the idealistic nonsense was behind it and i don't know why anybody is listening to a idealistic teenager when deciding to spend millions of dollars building a vigilante army that doesn't seem like a particularly good idea i don't care if the kid is a genius he lacks the life experience anyway there's a giant monster wandering the streets of Gotham. Tim gets himself a lovely concussion, but things are out of control. These protesters that are the first victim syndicate patsies, the sort of useful idiots, are put in the path of trouble, and it's really the first victim's idea to cause as much chaos as possible, and Anarchy gets upset with her. I don't know why he's an anarchist, but he's actually more like a closet communist than anything else, because because the way that he's been written several times throughout the run of Tinian is more like an angry little communist than or a extreme socialist than as a anarchist because this would be more along the lines of what real anarchy is unless he's one of those people that doesn't understand the definition of anarchy. Meanwhile it looks like Dr. Victoria has come up with a solution that she gives to Orphan to go out and use on their roving monster problem. Well there's some nonsense with between anarchy and the first victim that just sort of like gets haphazardly resolved off panel and then you see the result of it was kind of rushed and lazy and they spend a lot of time showing the batmobile driving around fighting monsters meanwhile cassie talks to basil and they start to have an actually a really interesting conversation and then there is a massive twist ending that will actually was really effective it was pretty pretty hard so the twist ending was a little predictable because we had a little bit of foreshadowing of it from future Batman but it was uh it was definitely unexpected in some regards if you haven't been paying attention but if you kind of read between the lines you knew what was coming and they hinted at it last issue but you didn't think it would happen all in all it was a rather realistic plausible ending to the scenario that was set forth but of course this is DC Comics and uh we're gonna get a lot of navel gazing and whining about it next issue i have no doubt all in all an okay issue it could have spent more time on the protesters because they really didn't talk about that and how they're starting to riot that became like a background situation that really needed more attention than it got this could have been a much better storyline if they weren't focusing on the interpersonal drama aspects of it and making it more soap opera if they had taken those soap opera elements out and made it more of an adventure story it probably would have been a much better storyline as it is i don't think i'd pay cover price for it it's worth a buck or two but that's about it it's better than most of the other issues in the storyline so far in my opinion would i recommend it only if you're hard up or you find it in a bargain bin and you can get the whole storyline otherwise it's not going to make any sense you can't really jump into any of these tinian issues without knowing what's happened for the past year in the series so i'm really disappointed with that this storyline has been better than the previous one but it still suffers from a lot of the soap opera elements, making it to where you have to read a lot of background before understanding fully what's going on. But the ending was definitely setting it up for a compelling next issue, hopefully. But we'll find out. As is, I would recommend this one, but only if you find it cheap. That's just my take. As always, thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future reviews. If you want to help the channel out in other ways, links are in the description and on the about page. And we hope to see you on the next one. We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world.
Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we're looking at Detective Comics number 974. The story is called Night's Fall. It's written by James Tinian IV, Felipe Briones, artist, Alan Pasaluqua, colors. Sorry, I'm sure that I got that one wrong. Sal Cipriano, letters, Gilliam March, and Jason Wright, cover. I really like the cover. That is an awesomely dynamic cover. It took me a minute to figure out that was Batman's cape swirling around him and not like some kind of weird brambles or something i'm smart dave walgo's assistant editor chris conroy editor jamie s rich group editor all right now the interior art here is overall pretty decent but it's a sharp contrast to what we've seen previously so bruce confronts kate and everybody else is having some sort of like mental breakdown even though they deal with dead bodies and crime all the time so there's a lot of moralistic grandstanding especially with like red robin over what kate did now kate actually makes some really good points what she did if she had been a cop or a soldier would have been considered heroic but this is superheroes in dc where every time somebody does something like this there's a whole lot of like navel gazing and moral grandstanding because this is written by people that have never been in a real dangerous situation and they are going to lecture us on morality when lives are on the line of course we've got cassandra having a huge breakdown which is totally understandable considering her relationship with the victim bruce gives kate kind of an ultimatum and azrael and batwing kind of go with her meanwhile dr victoria cures glory griffin of being mudface and you can tell that she has a lot of qualms about actually giving this woman the cure after she helped basil lose control that was actually a really good interaction scene i thought dr victoria october was handled really well there and you can kind of tell the disdain on her face that was really well handled. And then Spoiler and Robin have a breakup because Tim Drake has become like this narcissistic savior complex lunatic. I don't know how long that's been building up to that, but I, I don't care for the, the way they've been writing Red Robin lately. I liked it better under Chuck Dixon. And the fact that he has so many control issues is really unhealthy for the character. And it's kind of lazy writing. Meanwhile, Kate gets an offer from her dad. And we see Ulysses' arms strong is in control of something very very dangerous so a lot happens in this issue it's pretty well written but i could do without the moral lecturing and, and the dc's pathetic no kill clause because it's completely unrealistic for superheroes beyond that it's an okay issue uh, i'd say it's probably worth a buck or two to me but it's kind of a one-off because it's mostly dealing with the aftermath of the events and there's not a lot of action in it overall it's just kind of an end cap to the previous storyline so so it's, it's more of a soap opera issue. If you're looking for action adventure with people dressed like bats, you're not going to find it here. It's mostly just a bunch of pandering to moral relativists and a lot of uh, people lecturing you on how you should live your life and the decisions you make as they Monday morning quarterback it. So I could do without that. Otherwise, it's an okay issue. Am I going to recommend it? Only if you find it for a dollar. Anything over that's really not worth it. The art's okay though. I like the previous artist a little better, but that's just my opinion. As always, thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future reviews. And we hope to see you on the next one.